it's the time where I get to come in here and tell you about my new favorite fantasy series. Because I found something I'm obsessed with. And uh, now I'm going to take that obsession and monetize it. No, I mean, share it with you guys. <laughs> Listen, the real reason I have a booktube is because none of my real life friends like to listen to me rant about books. So I figure I'll do it to strangers on the internet. Just get it out. Hello, my friends. My name is Andrew Givler. If you're new here, I am an author and booktuber. This is where I talk about writing, about reading, and about everything in between. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, all right? Stick around. Uh, also, if you like what I have to say or you find it interesting, hit the like button. These things uh, are helpful so that YouTube knows to send you more of my videos. And it's helpful to me so that YouTube knows that I'm funny or something. I don't know. But as I said in the intro today, we are talking about uh, what might be my new favorite fantasy series, specifically urban fantasy. Now, anybody who's listened to me talk, who's looked at my stuff, who's read my stuff, should know that I'm a huge fan of Jim Butcher, okay? I am, I make no secret of this. I think the Dresden Files uh, are great. Actually, for me, the Dresden Files were the gateway into urban fantasy. When I was younger, I was a huge high fantasy reader, and I still love high fantasy. I haven't stopped liking high fantasy, but I really thought urban fantasy was dumb. Because every example I had read had really failed to make me suspend disbelief. Like they hadn't managed to mesh magic and the real world together in a way where I believed it and I thought it was uh, uh, good. The exception to this would be maybe something like Harry Potter when I was a kid. I didn't realize until I was much older that Harry Potter is technically urban fantasy. Think about it. And if you don't know the difference between urban fantasy and high fantasy for some reason, urban fantasy is magic that takes place in our world, right? Wizards living among us, vampires, werewolves, etc. But human beings on earth living amongst them. That's what makes it urban fantasy. Versus high fantasy is Lord of the Rings, something that takes place in another world, in another era. There, there could or could not be other races, things like that. That, That's basically the key difference though, is it our world versus a different world. That's more or less the major, the major thing. So most urban fantasy didn't do it for me. Dresden was kind of my gateway. It was two things, Dresden and Supernatural that I sort of discovered at the same time and shoved me over the brink. You know, the two most mainstream urban fantasy things possible. But the reason that I'm bringing them up is because this new urban fantasy isn't by Jim Butcher. In fact, he almost has nothing to do with it, but it is by James Butcher. Now, I know what you're thinking. Hold on, those names are kind of familiar. Uh, James Butcher is actually Jim Butcher's son. And he just published his first urban fantasy book and first book total called Dead Man's Hand. And uh, I picked it up because one, I'm curious. And two, the, the premise sound really interesting. I immensely enjoyed it and we're gonna talk about it, but I wanna talk about the first part, uh, which is the fact that he has to live kind of in the shadow of his father a little bit, right? Um, because this is not the first time that we've seen a prolific major leading author have a, a child decide to kind of follow in their footsteps and do the same thing. Uh, I believe Stephen King's son has published several books um, as well as I think some comic books and some other stuff. And I'm sure that's daunting, right? I can't imagine. My father's not an author, thank you, dad for leaving that one open for me. I appreciate it. Well, you got big shoes to fill, especially if you step in and write in your father's genre that he owns, right? Um, I have not read Stephen King's son's books, but I believe he does write some horror as well as some other things. I can't imagine trying to write horror and being Stephen King's, King's son. I, just like I can't imagine trying to write urban fantasy and being Butcher's Kid. I think that James is super aware of this as he steps in and uh, he made a couple decisions that I really, really, really like that made sure that it was his own tone and his own voice. And I just wanted to commend him for that and also say that uh, outside of this conversation, I'm gonna do my best not to compare it to Dresden because I think that this stands on its own. James is his own person and I immensely enjoy this. But the two things I will say is unlike the Dresden Files, uh, this book is written in third person, okay? And unlike the Dresden Files, this follows two characters that it switches between and these two characters uh, overlap. And so some of the scenes are seen from one of the perspective and some of the scenes seen from the other perspective and sometimes they're together and sometimes they're apart. But it worked really, really, really well. I think the characters are really vibrant and uh, interesting. And the result is that tonality wise, it doesn't feel like I'm reading anything that is Dresden. You know what I mean? Even though we're talking about a very similar genre, very simple feel, and you can definitely tell that uh, he has some of his father's sense of humor, some of his father's perspective on life, some of his father's like lens that he's viewing through, but the tone and the voice is all his and uh, very different. And I think that that decision was super smart and I really enjoyed it. So when I'm reading this book, I can definitely see his father's influence on it. Um, and it also was really interesting for me because it sort of shined a light on me. As you know, I write urban fantasy. Uh, I wrote in first person. I only follow one character. I didn't make some of the smart decisions James did, but I really like writing in first person and I, I really enjoy how it feels and the way that it inserts you into the story. And it was a conscious decision. <laughs> but seeing some of Jim's influence on James also made me realize some of the influence he's had on me that I hadn't even realized before, which was kind of interesting. It was kind of opening. That was a personal revelation. I kind of have to talk to a therapist or something about it. We'll get to it. But okay, let's talk about the book a little bit more in depth now because I really enjoyed it. And I really think you guys should check it out. Book one is dropped. I know he's working on book two. It's definitely set up to be a nice long running series. And I'm really excited about the world he's created. Now, there, like I said, there are two main characters in the world of Dead Man's Hand, and that is 
our world, to be clear. There's the Huntsman and Grimsby. Now the Huntsman is like a uh, old retired cop, like baddest on the beat kind of thing, right? And Grimsby is a young loser who got drubbed out of uh, being an auditor, which is like kind of like being an auror, kind of like being a uh, the, the wizard witch FBI. That's another key note. Everybody, uh, the magic users in this are witches, not wizards. I don't know if wizards exist in this world. Uh, that has not been answered, but Grimsby is a witch and the witches seem to be in power. So there's no white council. There is a uh, witch bureaucracy, which uh, runs completely different. So Grimsby is like a failed cop and the Huntsman is a retired cop, right? And they get drawn together because uh, a witch is murdered and they're connected to it and they go on this adventure. So those are the two characters' perspectives that you fall through uh, and where they suspect each other, they, end up, uh, they don't suspect each other, they do, they don't, they do kind of a dance and I'm not gonna give any spoilers on all of that. Uh, but what they do find as they're working through this is there's this huge nefarious plot that's pulling things together. And um, I gotta say a couple really cool magic mechanics that I haven't seen used quite this way before. So. I'm not gonna give anything away, but I, I really like the plot line. I like the way that magic is put in. Magic users are called unorthodox, and that sort of uh, accumulates anyone who's human plus, uh, werewolf, vampire, uh, witch, etc. And society is aware of them. They are somewhat, I think, like out, but they are considered different, and they are uh, governed sort of by like the unorthodox uh, affairs council, right? And the auditors keep an eye on them. And I get the sense that the US government's aware of this and that it is an actual branch and there's some cohabitation and commingulation. So unlike uh, Dresden or what's very common in a lot of urban fantasy, my own included, where, where the mortals aren't really clued in, right? In this one, they are clued in, they're used to it and it's just how life is. And Grimsby's literally a loser. He's like, uh, he does party tricks for a pizza parlor that does children's shows or like children's birthdays, right? Um, because he didn't make it as like uh, a magic cop. So he is uh, now a public magician, but everybody knows his magic is like mostly real, right? Like that, that's how that works. I think that storyline's super cool. It's a really, really interesting character to imagine having magic and the best you can be is a pizza parlor birthday magician, right? Like that's that's all you got, mm, bummer. Um, and then, you know, the burnt out cop also has his great stuff. They're two great archetypes and I think they work really, really well together. Then the, the plot that they uncover, it all makes sense. It flows really, really well. Um, there's a lot of personal growth that occurs too that I, I, I really like. And the world is really rich and vibrant. They go and in, in, interrogate different magic, you know, adjacent sort of creatures or people uh, to kind of get to the bottom of everything that's going on. On. And it's the kind of thing where like, I, I really like this book one because it, it covers a lot of ground, right? It exposes a lot, it progresses a lot. There's a ton that happens, but at the end, you still realize that there's like so much more this can go. One of my big pet peeves with first novels is they don't really show you um, the scope. I'm gonna use Dresden again. I know, I know I'm gonna compare against, but I think that's one of the best complaints you can re register about Dresden is when you're trying to get somebody new to read Dresden. Uh, book one, it's fine. Book two is bad. And that's not like a hot take. Okay, I'm pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure there's a quote from Jim apologizing for book two. And if I'm wrong about that, I take it back. But book two is just not good, right? Uh, book three is interesting, it's fun. And then book four is where it finally zooms out and you're like, oh, we're playing for keeps. Like this is a much bigger stake than I thought. And so I think that James really nails having uh, this sort of sense of small, 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 big, bigger, bigger. Uh, and I really enjoyed seeing the world zoom out because you get a, a sense for the richness of the world, the kind of thought that he's put in to put it together. He's got some really, really clever takes on a couple lesser used, I want to say mechanics of magic. I don't know what the right word is, like uh, without giving anything away, but like tropes or, or creatures or stuff, some of the stuff he pulls in, it's not the same tired, you know, uh, oh, a vampire and a werewolf walk into a bar. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but they're really overdone. So he pulled in some stuff that doesn't get used as much and used in really creative and clever ways. And I do think there will be vampires and werewolves in the story and there should be, those are great. But I love that he's sort of shining some light on some more obscure stuff. The way his magic works is really, really cool. The um, other universes that the tie in are also very, very cool. I have a lot, nothing but really, really good things to say about this. I devoured this book. I poured through it. Um, it was it was really a lot of fun. The writing style is really good. I think he's really good at describing things and I think he's really good describing human moments. Some of the best written scenes of the book were when a character has a realization or some personal growth or sort of ta tackles their own demons. I think that he shows resolve really, 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 really well. And the, like, the prose was just really clean. It flowed really well. Great sense of humor. I, I have no complaints about all of that. I think every book I read, I'm really picky about prose. Believe it or not, I know my prose is like really simple, but that is by design. I'm really picky about word choice that like, mm, I don't think that fit. Like if a word feels like it doesn't fit, it bothers me. I think there was like one word in the entire book where I went, I probably would have said, and it was like, instead of the word in, it was the word for, right? Like something like that, where I was like, man, I think I would have said that with in. I do that to everything. 
I'm a jerk. That's just how that works. But James did a great job of never taking me out of it, never making me feel like I needed to reread something to understand it. I understood everything that was going on crystal clear and enjoyed the flow and was pulled in. So I think that, especially for a first book, the writing is incredible. Uh, the story is solid. The universe is great. I want to see where this is going. I want to read book two ASAP. James, if you want a beta reader, sign me up, dude. I am down. Uh, I just published my first book. So like, we're, we're kind of on the same road. <laughs> Let's be friends. Uh, no, but seriously, guys, this book is great. If you do want to check it out, if you love urban fantasy as much as I do, which is hard because I freaking love urban fantasy, the link's going to be in the description below. You can go grab it. Go show support to a brand new author coming out, doing his own thing. I'm, I'm really excited about this series. I'm really excited to see where it goes. I can't say enough good things. Um, I should say a criticism. <sighs> I really don't have one. <laughs> uh, that's not to say it's a perfect book, but like, really, I think that it knew what it was and knew what it was doing and I knew where it was going, right? And sometimes if you do those three things, you can be not a perfect book and still be great. Like my example of a perfect book is Name of the Wind. I think Name of the Wind is a perfect book. Like I think that there's nothing out of place. I think that it is flowed and it's beautiful and it is uh, it is both beautiful and flows well. And you know, like it has all these intangibles, but in terms of the checklist to be good and to not have me upset about something, I think that James hit the mark on every single one. So. I highly recommend this is my favorite new discovery new series that i've read this year so far i'm putting it well up there with empire of silence right my favorite urban fantasy i've discovered this year empire of silence my favorite sci-fi together they make an un unholy alliance uh go check it out i will link it again in the description below in the meantime i have been passionate enough about this uh, i hope you guys go check it out because it really is great hit the like button hit the subscribe button and i'll be back with another recommendation soon